Good morning, Girl Scouts. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tyler. I am now live from my desk in our security operations center. Uh, I just want to give a warm welcome to everyone this morning and a thank you again to Marissa for uh, kicking this event off. I really do appreciate it. We thought we wanted to start today off with a view into our security operations center. We thought what better way to get the Girl Scouts security badge on a recycling through some of today's content. As Marissa said, we are going to be working through activities one and five of the Cybersecurity Basics badge today. That's going to be going over binary as well as malware, so you're aware. But first, I do want to kick it off with a little description of what my team does and what we do here in cybersecurity. So without further ado, we're going to jump on in. Let's start with what is cybersecurity? It is the practice of protecting computers, things like your laptops or your home desktop, servers, mobile devices, whether it be a phone or a tablet, networks, and data from digital attacks. Cyber attacks are typically aimed at gaining unauthorized access to sensitive information. Something like sensitive information could be your username or password for, let's say, a social media site, or maybe even a, your email address. Cyber attacks also aim themselves at stealing money. Yes, cyber attackers or hackers, as you've most, like, most likely heard them called, do typically want to make some money on the back end. That could be a main goal. And thirdly, a cyber attack could be aimed at interrupting normal business processes. Imagine today we all log into Facebook.com and for whatever reason, Facebook isn't working the way we want it to. That could be the result of a cyber attack. Now my team, the goal of a cybersecurity team or information security specialist, as we call them at US Bank, is to protect against those attacks and prevent things like breaches. We've heard about breaches before when a user ID or password may be exposed. And we also monitor potential threats that are happening in the cyber landscape. The threat maps I showed you guys live, that's taking a look at the global cyber landscape. We don't just watch things that are happening with US Bank. We want to also make sure everyone, including our customers, our employees, and really the public at large is protected. Okay, on to activity number one. We're going to find out how computers read information using binary code. But first, let's start with a brief description of what is binary code. Well, here you go. A code is a system of symbols such as letters or numbers, maybe even special characters, which are used to create a secret message. I bet there's a number of us on this call or on this event that have made up secret codes or secret languages so we could pass secrets. Well, code is also used as a language for computers. When you write code on a computer, you give it commands telling it what to do. As smart as our devices are, computers still need a user to give them commands. To do this, we use code, specifically binary code. Computers have their own coded language to process information. That information uses two numbers, ones and zeros, and we'll dive into that in a second. That's how they speak patterns to share directions. If I type an A, there is a set of ones and zeros associated with that A. The computer then interprets and then makes that command. It's called binary code. Any code that uses two elements is actually a binary code. When you play an online game, so Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, whatever it may be, binary code is actually spelling out what the computer should do for your next action. It's always running in the background. Great. What I'd like to do next is actually show you our alphabet translated into binary code. The binary alphabet sitting in front of us. As I said, binary is actually a set of ones and zeros. But to make this more interactive for us, we've translated into dark squares and light squares. There's a reason behind that, and I'll show you what a cool binary bracelet looks like here in a minute. So let's break these down. Each letter is made up of eight bits. You'll notice if I take my pointer and I point it at A, we have four bits in the front, four bits in the back. That is a total of eight. And as I said, they're represented here for us today in light and dark. Each square represents a one or a zero in binary code. So for us today, our dark square, that's going to be our zero. Our light square, well, that's going to be a one. So if we take a look at A, let's break down the eight bits that we see on screen. A would actually translate from dark, light, dark, dark to zero, one, zero, zero. 
then we have our space, 0, 0, 0, 1. And I have that translated down here. So anytime that you're actually typing on your keyboard, punching in T-Y-L-E-R, well, that would be my name, it's actually translating those binary code signatures into that word to then give the screen a command to present Tyler on screen. So what I'd like to do is take a look at the first letter of everyone's name. So for me, as I said, it's Tyler. Represented here in our alphabet, we have dark light, dark light, which translates to 0101. Then we have our space, and it's dark light, dark dark, or 0100. We do that so we can represent these potentially on a bracelet, but we'll get to that in a second. My partner made an incredible bracelet, and we do want to show it to you. So what I'd like to do, give you a second, find the first letter of your first name, and if you could, in the chat, type in the zeros and ones that would represent the first letter of your first name. I'm going to give you like 60 seconds. I'll be watching the chat. I can't wait to see some bi- So if I were to talk about, let's see, we've seen T for Tyler. What about my puppy? My puppy, her name is Dizzy. So if I take a look at our alphabet, I follow up to the D, and based on the translation we've discussed, it would be dark, light, dark, dark, but translated would be 0100. In fact, a D is represented twice. So 0100, and right back over to 0100. Oh, I see. And if I hit the reveal button, absolutely. We just used binary code or our representation of it to spell a word. Fantastic. What's great about that is that is how a computer interprets your inputs. It takes your inputs, translates them from binary, and then spells out something on screen. Fantastic. Our commands. Great job. Okay. We are right on time. 15 minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so that was activity one of the cybersecurity basics badge. You have one of your five activities done. Let's move into number five, and that is find out how malware attacks your digital devices. Now, this activity is going to be very interactive. So I want everyone, hands at the ready on your keyboards to try to type in answers into our chat. But first, let's find out what malware is. What is malware? Well, let's co combine a few words. If we combine the words malicious, meaning harmful, and software, you get the words malware. Malware is software that can attack computers, tablets, phones, and other digital devices to cause them harm. Malware is intended to cause digital devices harm. That is the reason malware is, was invented. Computer viruses are one type of malware. Viruses are probably the malware you've heard about the most. I'm gonna detail out to you guys the six we see most often in cybersecurity though. Viruses can make their way onto your computer or device when you download an email attachment or content from someone else's flash drive. Here's a tip. If you're looking through your email and you get an email from someone you don't necessarily recognize and it has an attachment, should you click it? The answer is an emphatic no. That could have embedded malware. If you find a flash drive on the ground, should you pick it up and plug it right into your mom's computer? Probably not. That flash drive could also have embedded malware. Great. You could also be at risk when you click on links that are ads when you're surfing the web. They could then download malware from the internet. You also are at risk of getting a virus that way. If you click a link, let's say you're at Amazon.com shopping for shoes, and then you go to Facebook, and the next day you see a ton of shoe ads all over the place. Okay, that makes sense. We call those cookies. The idea is they're trying to follow you around to sell you those same shoes. However, if you're at a website you don't recognize and there's an ad for something that seems too good to be true, should you click it? Absolutely not. So for this step, we're going to find out ways that malware can enter your computer. Like I said, there are six we want to talk about, and here they are. There are many different types of malware, and we'll go through all six together. Malicious malware. Take a look at the chart that shows the different kinds of malware and what they do. They can be as nasty as they sound. Here are the six most common we see in cybersecurity. Let's start with the first one, the one everyone's heard of, a virus. A brief definition. A computer virus is a small program that sneaks into your computer on an email or a download. Then it copies itself and causes problems the same way that a cold virus does in your body. A virus might, not, might just slow down your device. It also might make it so you lose all the applications and documents you have on that device. 
Good. Number two, a worm. Worms are programs designed to get into your computer, copy themselves, so they make copies of themselves, and quickly harm your device. A worm can infect your email account and then send a copy of itself to all of your email contacts. Imagine I get to work, I click on an attachment and a link, and a worm infects my work computer. That could then send viruses, emails with embedded viruses to Charles that he would then get and have to deal with. Third, a Trojan horse. A Trojan horse seems to be a program that can be helpful, but when you download it, it attacks your device. The name comes from an old Greek story. The Greeks were battling the Trojans. They made a huge wooden horse, pushed it up to the city gates, and hid inside. The people of Troy thought it was a gift. They opened the gates and pulled it in. They had no idea there were soldiers inside waiting to attack. A Trojan horse, if it looks too good to be true on the internet, our number one rule in cybersecurity is it is too good to be true. Great. Number four, spyware. This one's pretty simple. Spyware is sneaky software that installs itself onto your devices. Once it's in your computer, it starts to steal your password, your email addresses, and other important information. It's sitting there watching what you do. In cybersecurity, we might call that a man in the middle attack. Number five, adware. Adware uses clever advertisements to trick you into giving away your private information. I got a pair of Jordans, instead of being $200, they're 40 bucks, click here. But all I need, email, password, and your mom's credit card number. Don't do that. Great. Lastly, ransomware. And this is the one we see most often nowadays in cybersecurity. This software takes over a computer and kidnaps your data. The attacker won't allow the user to access your information until a ransom is paid. Even then, they sometimes won't give your data back. The reason we say, I say we see this a lot in cybersecurity, these are things that could attack not just people, but small businesses. Small businesses might not have the awesome facility you saw that we have here. They might be a, a shop maybe run by two or three people. If ransomware comes through and tries to take, let's say, their sensitive data, that could actually really harm their business. So we see that one a lot. What I'd like to do with those six, I'm going to pull them up on screen. We're going to play Cyber Crimes Trivia. That was my best game show voice I could do. I got low with it. <laughs> All right. Here are six to refresh our memory. And each of these has a brief description of what they do. We have adware. And it says, I use ads to find your private information. A virus, I spread code. Ransomware, I block users from their computer. Spyware, I spy on you. A Trojan horse, I trick you into doing something that harms your computer. And lastly, worm, I damage your email and downloads. What we're going to do with these six different types of malware attacks is play Cyber Crimes Trivia. And our first question begins now. So what I'll do, I'll read through these, and then I'm going to give you... 30 to 40 seconds to shoot your answer into our chat. Once I see a bunch of answers come through, we'll pull up the correct answer and move on to the next question. There are six. I want to try to get through all of them. So our first cyber crimes case, and I've titled these all like goosebump books, the case of a blocked computer. computer. <laughs> One day, Susie went to turn on her computer and a message popped up that said, I am holding your computer hostage. To get back on your computer, you'll need to pay me $1,000 in ransom. Which of the six malwares do we think this is? Ransomware. Absolutely. I block users from their computers. Again, this can affect, can affect individuals, companies, and we've actually even seen it affect some cities and towns in 2019. So be on the lookout. Great. Cybercrime question uh, number two. Here we go. Cybercrime 2, again, sweet titles, The Case of the Bad Ad Virus. While surfing the internet on her mom's computer, Ella saw an ad that promised she would receive something free if she clicked on the ad. After clicking on the ad, a window appeared saying, thanks for the click. Now we know what kind of computer you're using. All right, 45 seconds, your time starts now. And... Absolutely. Great job, everybody. Round of applause. Adware. I use ads to find out private information. Fantastic. Again, I'll say this over and over again. If you're online, if it looks too good to be true, Charles, it's... Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Fantastic. All right. Into cybercrime number three. The case of the bad code. Sienna, that's my niece's name. I put that one in there on purpose. 
Had a friend at school who had a game stored on a flash device, a flash drive. Sienna borrowed the drive to install the game on her home computer. After installing the game, she noticed her computer took longer than usual to boot up, was moving very slowly, and the fan never stopped running. It sounded like a Harrier jet. I've had this happen to a, a computer in my house actually in the past. Of the four remaining malware types, could that be spyware, virus, Trojan horse, or worm? 45 seconds starts now. Cybercrime 3 is absolutely virus. Yes, so Sienna in this scenario had a flash drive that her friend gave her. That may have had, let's just, you know, could be Minecraft, could be any game on there, but someone had embedded some malicious software on there. Even though you know it's coming from your friend, you still want to take precautions before plugging something into your personal device. Here at US Bank, if I were to find a flash drive and plug it in, the way we have our computer set up, I would get an alert saying, nope, this device is unreadable. Please give it to your cybersecurity team, and then I'd hand it right back over to Charles. Is that right, Charles? Absolutely, Tyler. Thank you, Charles. Let's move into cybercrime case number four. Case number four, the case of the messed up emails. These all sound so haunting. All right, Ashley was online. An email came into her mom's inbox offering her a vacation cruise if she opened the email in the next five minutes. Curious, she opened the email only to see hundreds of copies of the email. None of it made any sense. Next thing, next thing she knew, the email closed itself and a new email window opened and started sending copies of the email to all of her mom's friends' email addresses in the two box. That's the most I've ever said email in one breath. <laughs> of the last three that we have, could that be spyware, Trojan horse, or worm? Your time starts. They damage emails and downloads, but they also copy themselves a ton, right? So what happened to Ashley there, once she clicked on that email, it regenerated itself over and over and over again. And then it did that scary thing where it then took over her email and sent emails out as if they were coming from her. That's actually how friends and families and coworkers get infected by malware quite a bit. Great. We have two more guys and we're right up against the time. So let's do it. Cybercrime case number five, the case of the phony. Mia overheard her mom and dad talking about their computers. Mia's dad asked her mom why she sent him a picture file in an email. Her mom said she didn't send it to him, even though it looked like it came from her email address. She told Mia's dad that if he opened the file, it could include a program that's a phony and could take over his computer. She told him she sh he should delete any emails that he's received from her that day. Okay, two options left, guys. Is it spyware or Trojan horse? Absolutely. I tricked you into doing something that harms your computer. It looked like the email came from Mia's mom to her dad. It wasn't. It was an imposter. In fact, it looked like an official email. He clicked on it. But when you download, let's say you open up an email that has a photo in it. Usually that photo is an attachment. As we've said, malware can be embedded in attachments. Good job. Now, there's only one left. So might not be shocking what the answer will be, but we're going to go through it together anyways. Number six, case of the spy catcher. Emily had an email assignment to write about gorillas, so she surfed the internet for information. She clicked on websites that she wasn't sure about. The next day, Emily was surprised to see pop-up windows on her computer selling her things about gorillas. Everything from stuffed animals to wildlife tours. Was something or was someone or something spying on Emily's computer while she surfed the internet? And if I had to guess, process of elimination, spyware. Yes, most likely Emily went to a, a website she did not recognize not something she went to on a normal basis and because that she clicked on something that was that had embedded malware that led to spyware and someone actually watching what was going on her computer awesome that is activity number one and number five of the cybersecurity basics badge round of applause everybody <laughs> two of us made that sound pretty uh, sound good Stereo. great absolutely Guys, we thank you so much. Uh, this has been a fun week for us putting this together. Uh, we want to do more of these in the future. Our plan is to make as many fun videos that might look like they're public access as possible. That's kind of a thing Charles and I really like to do. Uh, and again, Marissa and everyone at Girl Scouts of Western Ohio, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a blast. And we will see you guys again in the future. And hey, hey, hey. Sorry. one, two, three. Hey, hey, Girl, Girl Scouts. Scouts.